Hello everyone and a warm welcome to this morning's webinar and strange as it feels to be saying this, the very last of the Life Changes Trust Dementia Program webinars. This is their legacy event and we're calling it From Small Acorns. You'll see why as we go through the morning. My name is Kain Demanji and I'm the project manager for About Dementia. We are a national policy and practice forum that puts the voice and rights of people with dementia and unpaid carers at the heart of our work. We are also hugely privileged to be one of the national legacy partners for the Life Changes Trust Dementia Program and have been working closely with them for a number of years now. And hello from me. I am Myra Lamont, a former carer for my husband, Archie, who had semantic dementia. I have had the honour and privilege of working alongside the Life Changes Trust from its early days. I've been a programme advisor for the Dementia Strand. I've been involved in conferences run by and for carers, sat on funding assessment panels, and recently as a community researcher with Stirling University in the independent evaluation of the Trust. I will be co-chairing the event with Kendi today Later, Arlene Crockett from the Life Changes Trust will be joining us to chair the panel question and answer session. So today is a celebration, a time for reflection and a time to look to the future. Over the years, the Life Changes Trust has built solid foundations to support people living with dementia and unpaid carers to become advocates and activists, to have their voices heard and to play a primary role in changing policy and practice for the better. This morning, we'll be hearing an overview from Arlene about the Life Changes Trust's legacy, some information on their local legacy partner funding and the Trust's aspirations for their legacy. And my colleague, Maxine Megan from About Dementia will be sharing a little bit more about our plans for taking forward some of the learning of the Trust now and into the future. We'll also be hearing from BOLD, Bringing Out Leaders in Dementia, which is another national legacy partner of the Trust, and we'll be reflecting on some of the projects that started as small acorns and have flourished not only to become great oak trees, but whose roots have provided help and guidance for others to follow. Before we get started, we have just a few housekeeping points. There is a break scheduled in the program today, but if you feel you need a little bit more time away from your screen at any point, then please feel free to do so. The webinar is being recorded and will be on the Life Changes Trust website in a few days time, so you can catch up at your leisure if you miss anything. Everyone will be notified by email when it is available. During the webinar, if you would like to ask a question of the speakers or the panel, then please feel free to do so. You can put your questions in the question and answer section at the bottom of your screen. There's also a chat section for general comments. You will see in the chat section that there is a drop down menu. This gives you the option to share your comments just with the panel or with everyone. It's always nice to share with everyone, so please remember to select that option. Thank you all for bearing with us. And now, on to today's event. As I mentioned, this morning we'll hear from some projects and individuals reflecting on their journey with the Trust and their plans for the future. And we'll be meeting a few familiar faces along the way. So we've got lots to get through, a whole nine years worth in fact. We're going to start by hearing from Arlene Crockett from the Life Changes Trust. Arlene heads up the Dementia Programme at the Trust and has been doing so for over four years now. Over the last year or so, the Trust has been putting in place their national legacy partners, BOLD, About Dementia and Age Scotland, and they have more recently identified their local legacy partnerships. Arlene will reveal all, a world exclusive. She will also reflect on the Trust's own journey and share her aspirations for the future. I'll hand over to Arlene now, and thank you, Arlene. Thank you, Myra, for such a lovely um, welcome in this very snowy um, morning here in, in North Lanarkshire, where I am. Um, 
I am nervous and I think I'm even more nervous now seeing some of the lovely comments that have come through already from some faces that I know and some faces that I know from the past as well. So, so thank you so much for joining us and, and helping us to reflect on our work as a dementia programme over the last nine years and look towards the future um, with you all. So here goes. As a time limited trust, legacy was not an addition but a core part of what we were building. Whilst creating funds and programmes was important, it was also a priority to build on what we were learning and its impact ensuring the opportunities were there for now and well into the future. People with dementia and unpaid carers needed to know that an endowment in their name was not just about a moment in time, but was about making change for their future and for those who were coming later on. And so when I talk about legacy today, I include all of the 318 projects we have funded, where we have built strong relationships with many individuals and organisations. Funding in a way that is strategic, flexible, with a focus on relationships, placing people and unpaid carers front and centre. When I talk about legacy, I include an investment in people. Being one of the few funders in the early days, and even now, who fund individuals. Funding 41 peer-to-peer -peer resources like Sensing Challenges by Agnes Houston, now used in many countries across the world, and resources produced by unpaid carers like this room, as well as the countless awards made as part of our individual award, scre award schemes, almost 1,500 people benefiting, and also a carer for the carer funds. Seeing the potential in people and not being blinded by the stigma often associated by the illness. When I talk about legacy, I include the 21,744 people with dementia and 11,566 unpaid carers who have directly benefited from funding from across the length and breadth of Scotland's communities, recognising their diversity and what is important. What we have achieved and continue to do is to push against the norm and look beyond what is out there changing the narrative with rights, relationships and voice at the heart of our work. We have spent a lot of time drawing together learning, recognising that while self-evaluation was needed, we also needed an independent lens too. How do you know what you're doing is working if you don't ask the question? And how do you identify what needs to change? This area of our work, I think for some, was never always understood. I don't mean by our funded projects or our beneficiaries, but others who were not quite used to working in this way and could not always understand the benefits. We have never shied away from the fact that early evaluation has been critical to our success, both as a funder and in our influencing work. And what you can see is that we have drawn our learning from the 14 independently commissioned evaluations across all of our funded work for the Dementia Programme and hosted eight events to share that learning over the last three years. What we can truly say is that we stand alongside a huge body of evidence, independently captured and independently verified. Until the Dementia Programme came along, this was something unheard of regards the story of dementia in Scotland. And what we have shown is that it is possible if the commitment to evaluate is genuinely there from the outset and it is then used to drive change. A simple concept, I know, but it's still not always a priority when policy and practice work is being developed, but that's changing. The Dementia Programme has went some way to changing this and building strong foundations with its own evidence base. And our legacy partners, our projects, and those people with dementia or unpaid carers who have benefited will continue to fly the flag to ensure this is not lost or forgotten. Dementia, a whole life approach is another huge legacy for the Dementia Programme, drawing together its learning as well as what else was taking place across Scotland. In the last nine months, our fantastic admin staff have posted over 400 copies of this resource to contacts across Scotland and the rest of the UK, including the National Library for Scotland and countless community organisations, health and social care professionals and key people in government and in the IGBs. It has been downloaded hundreds of times from our website too. This is a strong legacy for the Dementia Programme 
and we look forward to the second edition being developed by About Dementia very soon. We still have some cop copies left. Um, so if people require one posted, you have until um, close of play on Monday to get your order in to our admin staff. And I'm going to ask one of my colleagues just to post the Dementia Programme email address on the chat for people's information, because that's how you will do that. At our Community Dementia, Dementia event in December of last year, we shone a light on our regional influencing programme, covering all 14 NHS regions in Scotland, where we collaborated with local people to develop their priorities and support their community to work together to realise them in policy and practice. Change has already happened as a result of this work, with much more to come. This is, was not easy, with many bumps in the road, and I'm sure other, others in this call will appreciate that. But we had a huge network behind us, a solid evidence base, and a collaborative approach, which was a real game changer. Beginning with the Highlands Round in February 2019, the Regional Grants Programme has distributed over 1.6 million to 125 grants in all of Scotland's 14 NHS regions. It has provided funding, learning opportunities, and ongoing support to grant holders. It has put decision-making into the hands of local people, including unpaid carers and people living with dementia, and has contributed to a really strong evidence base focused on the impact of what relatively small amounts of money can have on people's lives as well as increasing the self-confidence of community groups. It's important that we recognise all of this work that I've highlighted so far, that this is part of the Dementia Programme Legacy too, as without it, the plans for legacy I'm now about to summarise would not have been possible to develop or even imagine on the scale that we bring you today. And so, the Dementia Programme has appointed legacy partners who will work to keep our priorities alive with the importance of voice, relationships and rights at the heart of what we do. When About Dementia and Bold, our national legacy partners, were appointed in 2019, it was on this basis. About Dementia has a large number of policy and practice groups and projects now active that are founded on our own priority areas. Bold is a leadership school that uses creative methods to bring together leaders in all, of all types in the dementia world, including people with dementia and including unpaid carers, so that they can develop as leaders in relationship with one another. The voice and rights of people with dementia and unpaid carers at the heart of this leadership programme. Age Scotland has now been appointed as a national legacy partner in order to build on and continue to use the Dementia Programme's evidence base for influencing policy and practice in Scotland. This work will officially begin on the 1st of April. Led by About Dementia, they will be responsible for hosting and curating all of the Dementia Programme publications and their evaluation evidence, creating the next edition, as I, I have mentioned, of Dementia A Whole Life Approach, administering small grants to local projects similar to a regional grants programme, as well as grants for the peer-to-peer -peer resources that we've had huge success, of, success with, created by people with dementia and created by unpaid carers. They will work closely in partnership with BOLD as well. I will shortly announce the 11 local um, legacy partners, but not quite yet, so, so hold it for a moment more, who have recently been appointed and we are about, and about to get their work underway. We have been funded to support people with dementia and unpaid carers through two of the following approaches, dementia friendly communities, peer support and meeting centres. We chose these areas because the evidence of their impact is strong. Local and national legacy partners will work together to sustain the strong community led infrastructure that has been built by the dementia programme since the first funding went out in 2015. This was developed initially through a national community of learning and practice. And some of you on this call might remember our fantastic meetings in Perth and in Glasgow. And then when that became too large for the trust to manage alone, the trust commissioned about dementia policy and practice forum and the Bold School of Leadership to build on and develop that work. A collection of regional learning hubs with coordinators have been established now through the Trust Regional Grants Programme, which I mentioned before. And we know that the local grants programme um, to be launched by Age Scotland, I am sure very soon, will work closely with these coordinators and others 
as part of its development and delivery. All of the legacy plans I have outlined retain the commitment of early evaluation, wide sharing of learning, learning from others and seeking further ways to sustain this work beyond the funding provided by the Trust. This is not about funding a moment in time, but about sustaining and transforming the future of dementia care in Scotland. This is not about individuals, projects and organisations working independently, but about supporting a well-established network to grow and become even stronger with the tools, resources and renewed confidence to take this forward. Moving forward, people with dementia and unpaid carers should expect nothing less than what has been achieved so far with legacy partners firmly taking over the baton. Most important is that we never forget people with lived experience are front and centre, seeing their contribution as people and not simply as passive recipients of support. And so on to our new local legacy partners. Thinking back to last week's Younger Persons Legacy event, I think it was Renee who gave a small drum roll. So maybe you can do that all yourselves in wherever you're watching the webinar from just now. This has been you really miss the face-to-face -face events and, and the build-up that that brings. So here goes. This is a busy slide, I know, but we plan to send you a briefing note with the post-event email detailing all of the legacy partners, their contact details, and one or two lines about their plans. As I know, many of you will be keen to know more and, and get in contact. But until then, I will help you navigate the top three rows are our new local legacy partners. So these are The Haven, Acorn Shed Music in partnership with Curtis and the Village Storytelling Centre, Dunblane Development Trust, Playlist for Life, Glasgow's Golden Generation, Age Scotland Orkney, Dementia Friendly Presswick, Sporting Memories Network, Stand in Fife, Kerry Connections and Deep Ness some of which um, you will see later on in the programme as part of the um, discussions that are taking place. All of these local legacy partners will have a focus, as I have said, on at least two of the areas of dementia-friendly communities, meeting centres and peer support. And the bottom row of your screen are our national legacy partners referenced earlier about dementia, old and aged Scotland. So there you go, there's the big announcement. Since the first funding went out for the programme in 2015, we have deliberately funded those who are in tune with our trust agenda to create better lives in a way that is transformational and sustainable. Our legacy partners are no exception to this and, we have them, and they have demonstrated already their commitment to the work of the trust and what it means to work in this way. The dementia programme, far less the trust itself, cannot control the long-term outcomes of this work but we believe we have set legacy partners up for success and look forward to see what the future brings. Their work is not about replicating the work of the programme, but about building on what has been achieved, develop, developing this in their own way, responsive to the needs of people with dementia and unpaid carers, and the evolving dementia policy and practice landscape in Scotland. And so before I finish, I wanted just to take a bit of time to reflect with some images that speak to me about the Dementia Programme legacy. There was a moment, several actually, at the 106,000 conference in Dundee last year that truly summed up legacy for me. This was an incredible two days where people with dementia were genuinely in the driving seat. People using their voice for the first time on their terms people chairing and leading roundtable discussions, as well as, mu as, well as much um, needed peer support being provided to share the loads and work together. People responding to policies and consultations that affect them their way, and then writing position papers and presenting them to the minister after the event, providing solutions to the issues that affected them. The work of the Dementia Programme has made a huge contribution to this, and it was incredible to see it all coming together and standing on its own. Without funding projects like STAND, creating opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer resources and hosting regional events that draw people together to affect change, I am not sure how much people with dementia would have felt empowered and confident to take this step. It was incredible and really moving to watch. The evidence base the programme has developed in partnership with so many is groundbreaking. 
there is an abundance of resources now out there, more than ever before, that we can only hope will grow in the years to come. Dementia-friendly communities, alongside the countless hundreds of other projects we have funded, have changed how dementia is represented across Scotland and beyond, more than we could ever have imagined. Seeing Scottish Government recently invest in community-led support as part of the recent announcement of £1 million is not something we thought we would witness in the Trust's lifetime. And we know that the dementia programme evidence, in particular the Dementia Friendly Communities report by Hammond Care, was significant in this funding being awarded. And we look forward to seeing how this develops alongside our own legacy plans. And last but by no means least is the legacy of our staff. Our dementia program staff, all of our staff across the trust. I really love this program and um, this photograph. A sea of green um, from our last face-to-face -face event in November 2019. People who always work towards people-led and co-productive principles, where people with lived experience and professionals have an equal seat at the table. We have developed, we have designed and delivered the work together. Everyone's contribution is recognised and plays a vital role in creating better lives for people and their communities. And they're just an amazing bunch of people. And it has been a real honour and also great fun to work with them and get to know them. They are also a big part of our legacy. And so our road trip is coming to an end. And let's be honest, it's been one heck of a ride. It's now over to our legacy projects to refuel and head off on a new journey with renewed hope and a willingness to be bolder and to be stronger. The dementia landscape has changed significantly since the first strategy was launched in 2010, and people are thinking and talking about lived experience in a different way than they were when the Trust first opened its doors. But we still have a long way to go before we genuinely witness a level playing field, and it is up to us all today and in the years to come not to lose sight of this and hold ourselves to account, and then perhaps we can truly realise transformational change in the lives of people with dementia and unpaid carers in Scotland. So thank you, and I'm now going to hand back to our co-chairs. Thank you so much, Arlene. What a wonderful presentation. I think everybody can see in the chat how well received that was. I think it's wonderful to see the breadth depth of work that has taken place over the, the course of the last nine years. Just some reflections of my own, the, the emphasis on, on grassroots, on communities, on people living with dementia and unpaid carers absolutely in the driving seat of this work. The way that the communities have managed to capture uh, the way that people living with dementia and unpaid carers give back to their communities in so many ways and the fact that lived experience is now so front and centre on the agenda in so many ways is absolutely wonderful but I think also so important to remember that whilst this has been wonderful work there is a lot of work still to come and I'm hugely hugely honoured to be playing a role and very much looking forward to working with everybody on this call to make sure that that legacy really really does continue to have impact long into the future so with that in mind let's move on to our next section which features one of the trust's national legacy partners they're called bold which stands for bringing out leaders in dementia they were funded at the same time as about dementia and our, our, our sister project they received a five-year award from the trust bold did not define what leadership means they recognize that it can take all shapes and forms they bring together people from far and wide to encourage them to explore their skills and recognise their own talents. They provide free leadership opportunities and workshops across Scotland for those living with dementia who can flourish and make the most of their potential. One of the key elements they use in their workshops is creativity as a way of expressing thoughts, feelings and ideas. To get a little taster of what these workshops can produce, we're going to hear firstly from Professor Brendan McCormack, who is the project coordinator at BOLD, sorry, co-director at BOLD. He will introduce a short podcast which features Lil and Alan, who took part in one of the BOLD residential workshops. We're then going to hear from BOLD partners Nancy McAdam and Martha Middlemiss. Nancy, who lives in the Black Isle, wrote a poem in a workshop as part of her BOLD leadership development work. 
and Martha worked with Nancy to turn it into an incredible song. First though, let's hear from Brendan. Hello, I'm Brendan McCormack and I'm one of the leaders of the BOLD project. BOLD stands for Bringing Out Leaders in Dementia and is a programme of work funded by the Life Changes Trust. In the BOLD programme, we help our partners to realise their qualities as leaders and to work with persons who are living with dementia to engage in their community. In this audio recording, you will hear Lil and her husband Alan, two of our BOLD partners, talk to Fenella, one of our other BOLD partners, about their experience of participating in the BOLD residential workshops we held in Inverness prior to the COVID pandemic. In these workshops, we use a lot of creativity to help people to surface their quality as leaders and to realise their potential in facilitating engagement. Since the pandemic, we have brought these workshops online and continue to work in these ways with our BOLD partners as we move the programme forward. So hi, my name is Fenella Kerr and I attended part of the first BOLD cohort which started in Inverness and today I'm talking with Lil and Alan who both live with dementia. So I'd first like to ask you, how did you both find out about BOLD? We found out about BOLD through Christine. She said that she thought that it might be a good thing for us um, because at that time we're, we've always been very private and quiet and uh, so this is the way we, we started with BOLD. Right, That's because one of my questions was what, what did you get out of it? The information you were getting mm -hmm. that you didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, and again because we never really put ourselves out but this made you want to put yourself mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and as I say, like this morning, when Lo and I were talking about the doctor, and I said, well, remember, bold. Mm -hmm. This is about going to the doctor. I said, well, what did the bold teach you? Mm -hmm. Speak up for yourself. Yes. And that's exactly what, that's what she's going back to, you nice people leave this house. Mm -hmm. And would you, would you recommend it to other people? Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And what do you think about how we recruit people who live with dementia? Because Bold has a lot of partners, uh -huh. l like myself. My mum uh, lives with dementia, so I'm there because I want yeah. to support her. We feel it's important that people who are living with dementia join the Bold, oh, Bold group. And we wanted to know from you how we might recruit people. What would we say to recommend it to people? But Probably. Well, the thing is, sorry, I'll go on. Probably just to say, well, have a go, see how you feel. Because I didn't know how I would feel until I was there. Mm -hmm. And I got so much out of it and I thought, yeah, I'll go back. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd like to do that. And when I saw other people's ways of being unsure mm -hmm. or maybe another little lady being so positive. So did you meet anybody there? Because Anna Marie was on your bold group, wasn't she? Yes. She's now yes. very much part of uh -huh. the Dolphin Arts Project. Well, we've been with Anne Marie uh, since she had a few classes before I actually joined mm -hmm. because it was a small class and my line of craft mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I've been there ever since Alan bowed out for, and he's come back again mm -hmm. also because a friend needed to go yeah. and she had left through great dementia and she's been encouraged back Has she? and she actually recognised in some form Alan first then myself yeah. So bold is all about showing love, showing character, being creative and being mm. bold. What do you feel about being creative and living with dementia? Is it something that you think is important or do you, is it? For me personally, I have to be creative. Mm -hmm. I get held back with the craft because I can't always get time and sometimes my hands can't do it. Yeah. But to me, craft is important because... I can turn my hand to quite a few things. I started with her too, of course, and I always said that I can't draw, you know. Of course. But I was surprised when I had, I actually honestly didn't recognise the stuff I'd done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was when it's up there, that I, I didn't do that, but I, I did do it. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy it and that is, the other thing is that with the bold, uh, with the bold and with the, the our club, mm -hmm. the laugh and the enjoyment that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a bit of a rogue at times, but at the same time, we we'll always have a laugh and mm -hmm. there's never any, 
upsets, you know, mm-hmm. and it's great because you can nobody's um, sit, who's sitting next to you saying, what, "Why are you here?" You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A clear view I want a clear view of the road ahead Take me up the track to home I want to go somewhere Wake me up I want to be like the birds at dawn Carry me off to the black isle Show me the birds clock stood on the shelf, closed the door to happiness, once in a lifetime, a clear view of the road, innermost thoughts, clear sightedness, spring is in the air, we thought, <laughs> no it's not. <laughs> in the dark of night, but round and round you travel. With the birds and the dawn, you start your call, awake me from my slumber. Wake me up. I want to sing like the Dido's birds. Tack me a wall to the bro black aisle. Give me the buns and glens of him. They've missed me since I've been gay. They've missed me since I've been gay. They've Many thanks to Brendan McCormick and also Fenella, Lil and Alan, who has shown us how much bold is helping them build their confidence. To Nancy, who has been an inspiration to all of us. That song just took me on the journey to the Black Isle. You have been raising awareness of living well with dementia and having fun adventures and of course, today's rendition of your song. Nancy always has a smile and makes us smile. The work of Bold is going from strength to strength and we look forward to what the future brings for them. So next, we're going to hear from some projects who have received funding from the Life Changes Trust over the years, some as far as 20, back as 2014 and some more recent. They are Kiri Connections, Dementia Friendly Dumblain and the Stand Group in Fife. Between them, they have been involved in groups in dementia friendly communities, meeting centres, dementia activism groups, 
conferences, peer-to-peer -peer resources, and they are all local legacy partners for the Life Changes Trust. So their work will continue far and beyond the trust closing its doors. Colm McBriarty from the Life Changes Trust caught up with them to hear how they got involved with the trust, a reflection on their own journeys, how perspectives and practices have changed around dementia and their aspirations for the future. Here's what they had to say. Good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for joining us here today. This is the this is the section that is called the journey from small acorns, and we have to acknowledge Stand because we did steal that title from them. <laughs> this one. Um, what we're doing here is we're talking to uh, some of our grant holders over the last eight years um, and, and hoping to give a little bit of an insight about their journeys and, and about the Life Changes Trust's journey. Um, so we have Graham Galloway from Kerry Connections, who I'm going to be speaking to first. And then we're going to bring in Rita Seaman from Dementia Friendly Dunblane. And then at the end, um, we have Jerry King from Stand and Ruth McCabe from Stand. So I'm going to start off with Graham um, and Kerry Connections and the Life Changes Trust started working together in 2014 when you were actually still called the Kerry Muir and Dean Area Partnership. So I wanted to ask you, what if anything has changed in Scotland in that time for people living with dementia and unpaid carers of people with dementia and what still needs to change? Um. Well, I think one of the, the really obvious things and why we're here today about something that's changed is that the trust happened um, and the work the trust has done across Scotland um, has just impacted so many thousands of lives. Um, um, the, the really incredibly innovative work that the trust has nurtured and developed um, has had clear impacts and, you know, we see it every day here at Kerry Connections. Um, the trust has has um, supported us since 2014, as you said, and that really has enabled us to to grow as an organisation and offer the the support that we offer here to kind of develop in ways that we never possibly could have imagined back when that initial grant application went back in in 2014. Um, for me, I think one of the really key things that happened is that we were obviously part of the first cohort of dementia-friendly communities right. back then. Um, and when we put that first application into the Life Changes Trust, um, there were no people with dementia involved in that application at all. Um, it came about through the community partnership, as you said. There were people who, on the partnership, myself included, who had, had personal experience of dementia in their families. But we didn't go out and speak to any people with dementia at that point, I don't think. I think we got lots of very dry figures around the numbers of people we, we thought had dementia in the local area. The fact that Kirimir had a, an older than average population and therefore there would be a higher incidence of dementia. But we didn't actually go out and speak to any people with dementia and ask them, what do you think about what we're proposing? Um, by the time we came to the second application we put into the trust, that had changed completely and we were involving people with dementia in absolutely everything that we did. And I think for me that really is one of the key things that's happened over those eight years is the move away from, from discussions around being dementia friendly to discussions around being dementia enabled, um, which is something that comes through really strongly in the, the toolkit that the trust obviously produced around uh, around developing dementia friendly communities. And I think this really is absolutely exemplified by the work that that Jerry and Irene uh, and Ruth are doing with stands, but also the work that Ron Coleman and Deepness are doing uh, up in, uh, in Stornoway and all over Scotland. Uh, so for me, I think, you know, there, there's lots of incredible things that have happened. The, 1890 projects the trust has funded. What's it sitting at now, Colm, in total? Oh, you've put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, <it'd> be, <laughs> if, I, I, I mean, it, from individual grants all the way to projects, it's hundreds. It's hundreds and hundreds. 
um, and, and because uh, we would include the individual grants as you know as as as, as much important as you know some of the bigger projects absolutely, I, yeah. absolutely. I, think, and I think i think the, the small grants program again absolutely exemplifying the, the involvement of people with lived experience um in, in in deciding where those grants went and then with the uh, same thing happening with the other funds the final legacy fund we know obviously had uh, a panel of people who are living with dementia judging it and that to me really sums up that journey that that not just the trust but all of scotland has been on thinking about how how do we properly meaningfully involve people you know not that kind of tokenistic to key box exercise but actually embedding people in the process and certainly with Kerry connections that's something we're we're always striving to improve on we we have a, a board member who's living with dementia we have a board member who is uh, a carer of someone with dementia but for me that is always a process we're always looking to improve uh, improve that involvement in absolutely everything we do on both a local level and certainly on a, a national level around the development of meeting centres, because the 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 NEEC centre network is obviously starting to blossom now. We should yeah. have some interesting news very soon about the new fundees from the legacy yeah. funds. But I think by my calculations, we could potentially be looking at over 10 meeting centres funded across Scotland by the middle of this year. Um, and that, I think, again, is one of the real legacies that we have is this kind of culture where we're all working together. We're all we all know we're working to the same aims. We're sharing knowledge, we're sharing information, we're sharing support. Um, and I think that is really going to stand the test of time in Scotland and make sure that the, the local community support that, that has been so vital that the trust has nourished. And so we started working with you in 2014 and I'm now going to switch to Breda because Breda, if you remember our, rela you, our relationship with um, dementia friendly Dunblane started five years ago with a telephone conversation in spring 2017. Um, and that actually led to an application that was not successful. Um, but you picked yourself up um, from that disappointment. And uh, we've actually offered you three grants since then. So um, can, can you tell us a bit about the journey of Dementia Friendly Dunblane and the Dunblane Development Trust and the challenges and the successes you've achieved in that time? Yes, we set up in January of 2017, Dementia Friendly Dunblane, and we were quite ambitious, but very naive when we started. Um, hence why six weeks after starting, we've submitted the application, because we thought, let's just see what happens. And I think from marker. the uh, <laughs> advice that we got back from you, Colm, you know, and, and the tremendous support, we were encouraged to apply again, which we did, and we were successful. Um, I think on our journey, our journey has just been just amazing. Um, from that time of getting that grant, um, it just opened so many opportunities for us as a group. I, th I think that what we did first was we did spend time looking at the evidence base for dementia friendly communities because we soon realised there wasn't a blueprint in Scotland yeah. that had to be up to each individual community. Um, but I like to follow some sort of a framework and what we did was we found the Joseph Roundtree York dementia friendly community and we kind of looked at their four pillar model, uh, four -pillar model um, and kind of thought, well, that's a useful start because uh, at first it seemed quite uh, overwhelming that how do how can we achieve all of this? So the four cornerstone model looks at the people, the places, the environment and your resources. But we also chucked in activities. So <clears throat> we held some uh, focus groups with older people, not particularly with dementia, but just groups of older people. And what they said was they wanted a place to go to have some fun and meet their friends. And that's when the Memory Cafe started. And um, we got a, a grant from Stirling Council um, Community Fund, just under £2,000 to set that up. So that was the start of our, of our cafe and our journey. A very small sum of money. It mean? was a very small sum of money because all we needed at that time was to... to um, pay for the overheads of the expenses of the room that we were hiring. 
but the Dunblain Development Trust, we started to build a relationship with them and they very kindly gave us the room rent free for three months as a pilot group so that we could see how we were doing. Just and after the three things. months, we were invited to be a formal working group of the Dunblain Development Trust. And that got us over many hurdles because we were in the community interest group. We had no fiscal arrangements or policies or procedures, but by becoming part of Dementia Friendly or Dunblain Development Trust, they had all that infrastructure that we could link in with. And very, very quickly, from that conversation in 2017, you're in a very different place now because you're in the process of, um, alongside Kerry Connections, becoming a meeting centre. That's, that's right. Um, yes, I, I think well, we're eternally grateful to the, to the grants from Life Changes Trust because I don't think we would be as, as far down on our journey as we are now. And I think uh, appointing a project leader and having somebody in a paid position gives a lot more kudos, um, particularly when you're networking with key stakeholders and whatnot. You're on a much more level playing field than if you're just a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> and ha having having spoken first to Kerry Connections in our longer journey with them, and and you know it's been a slightly shorter but still a five year journey with dementia friendly Dunblane. That brings us to Stand, which I want to point out is called Striving Towards a New Day, which is a fantastic and appropriate name for what I think is a, a new type of organisation and also a new idea of what a dementia community is. So first of all, Ruth, can you give us a very quick history of Stand and how it came to be? I think actually, uh, Cole, Jerry should actually tell you that because Jerry was the main instigator of Stan. He was the pioneer. Um, oh. Well, he was. Well, it was very much his idea. So I think Jerry should tell you that story. Jerry, please do. Thank you, Cole. Um, the peer support group Stan was conceived out of the, the need really for me to talk to somebody who was also living with a diagnosis of dementia. Uh, in Fife, when I was diagnosed, there was absolutely nothing at all for people under the age of 65. Everything was all, uh, all the support was for people 65 and over. Um, so I was kind of at a loss. Um, and that's when I approached our uh, post-diagnosis support nurse, Maggie, and asked if I could speak to some of her uh, other clients. Uh, just because I needed to speak to somebody. Yeah. Um, and what happened was we, we, we there was about 15, 15 or 20 couples mm -hmm. met at the Alzheimer's Scotland Centre in Kokori one day for a cup of tea, uh, some cake uh, from there. We just, I mean, this was people who had never ever met each other in their life. Like, we came in and within five minutes we were talking, laughing, having a good blether. Um, and from that day on, a stand was formed. Um, and it has been an absolute, absolute godsend in Fife. Well, I want to pick up on that because, again, it's that very, very personal, very community-based thing. But I would say that you are not a, a passive member of, of, of the group. It's very much a case that, I mean, for example, last year alone, you co-chaired our community and dementia in Fife events. You also... Um, um, our, our learning network coordinator for our regional grants in Fife. At no point have I ever seen you as a passive member of the group that just sort of turns up for tea and cake. No, 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 no. I wanted to ask you in particular, um, as somebody living with dementia, what's it like to be a creator and a leader and a member of the community and a representative of an organisation like STAND, what does it mean to you personally? That's a good question, Colm. Um, what, what STAND has done for me is uh, it's, it's introduced me to people like Life Changes Trust, Age Scotland, Kitty Muir. It has opened up my whole world completely. Um, it has given me an increased sense of well being. Um, something that I lost completely when I was diagnosed. Uh, it has given me back my feeling of self-confidence, uh, which again was lost. 
uh, when I was diagnosed. I now feel as if I'm actually contributing to society again um, and leading a very, very good life with dementia. Um, when I was first diagnosed, I thought it was the end of the world. Um, but because of STAND and all the, the organisations that I've met through that, through STAND and who have supported us, um, it's not the end. It's been an amazing beginning. Mm -hmm. and it's been an amazing mm -hmm. journey. I meet some fantastic people. I'm fairly living a great life, Colm, to be honest. <laughs> that is the perfect way to end. Um, I don't want to say any more after that. Um, thank you all very much, not only for turning up here today and, 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 and speaking with me, but thanks for everything you've actually done over the years. We, we constantly say, all we do is kind of give out money, mm -hmm. but it's all the work is done by, by the projects. And it's, we're looking at years and years and years of work that you've done. So thank you all very, very much indeed. And, um, and even though we're pulling down the shutters, you'll still be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Many thanks to Colm, Graham, Breda, Jerry, and Ruth. Another wonderful video and great to see such um, warm and familiar faces. I think the discussion there has, has really inspired everybody in the chat. So please keep posting your thoughts and your comments in the chat. Um, and I think the, the real takeaway there is that everything is better with a bit of cake. So Bold, as we've already seen, is one of the Life Changes Trust's national legacy partners. And as I mentioned earlier, the organisation I'm privileged to work for, About Dementia, which is hosted by Age Scotland, is also a national legacy partner. We received a five-year funding award from the Life Changes Trust so that we, alongside the other national and local legacy partners, can continue the work to work with people living with dementia, unpaid carers, and those that support them across Scotland to see their priorities recognised and their rights upheld. Our work is done through a number of subgroups, each of which is involved with a particular policy area, such as transport, befriending and peer support, or human rights. Each subgroup has regular meetings which rotate around Scotland and more recently have been taking place via Zoom. I'm joined by my cat colleague, Maxine Megan, and June, who was part of the human rights subgroup. So I'm going to ask Maxine and June to join me on screen now. A big warm welcome to you both and I will hand over to you. Thanks, Kendi, for the warm introduction. And I can only reiterate what a fantastic and moving morning already. I always seem to have the hard task of following Jerry, but um, I am very privileged that I've been joined by another VIP today, June. So my name is Maxine. I'm the Influencing and Engagement Officer for About Dementia. And as I've mentioned, I work with truly amazing people and activists. Speaking of, I'd like to introduce you to June Anderson, who's a core member of About Dementia. Thank you, Maxine. My name is June Anderson, and I am an unpaid carer for my husband, Jim, living with dementia. And I have to say, I'm very honoured and privileged to hear everything that's been going on because I'm a relatively new member to the group. Fantastic, June, and thanks for joining us today. Um, so first, I just want to ask, how did you hear about dementia and what made you want to get involved? Well, I responded to an email sent from About Dementia, which interested me uh, greatly. After hearing about the project, I got in touch and said I would be interested in attending a Zoom meeting as I noticed About Dementia were keen to hear from people with lived-in experience. This made so much sense to me and of enormous priority. Fantastic. And you mentioned before, um, earlier on in your journey, that you were feeling a wee bit lost and you just didn't know where to even start to perhaps have dementia information or meet peers. Absolutely, Maxine. I was desperate for some information about dementia as it was new to us, um, as my husband Jim was uh, diagnosed just at the start of the pandemic. And there was nothing being offered by any of the health service agencies as I would have expected. Um, and I really had to fight for the diagnosis, which I kind of suspected. But unfortunately, there was just nothing forthcoming. Uh, and when you need help and you don't know where to turn, it was really a true realisation and enlightenment 
almost like an epiphany for us. Lovely. And when you, you first joined us, what was it like? Had you done anything like this before? Yeah, yes, um, I had. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I was anxious uh, about having little knowledge about dementia. Um, and when, when we spoke with each other, I was immediately treated with the most enormous humanity, grace and understanding about dementia team who really listened with so much empathy and offered good suggestions. I had done similar stuff before, but mainly for fighting for other people's rights and trying to undo any inequality shown to people who, were, who are perhaps not able to do so themselves. However, whether it would have been for housing, such as homeless people or children with complex needs, where local government are perhaps intent on proving their decisions are correct and don't always listen to reason. Mm -hmm. And if anybody knows June, um, they'll know that she's being modest because she's involved in a lot, um, a, a lot of different things going on. And as you said, mostly fighting for other people's rights. But I think you found yourself in a position where you weren't actually sure of your own rights as well and where to start. And it's often talking to peers and it actually makes you realise maybe something has happened and that you can fight that. Um, so you've been involved for around about two years now with About Dementia. Can you tell us what work you've been involved in? Yes, yes, certainly. No, you, you're absolutely 100% correct, Maxine. You've got it, uh, got it in one, as they say. Um, and I was so happy to be invited along to take place, uh, to take part rather in some technology for unpaid carers of people living with dementia. Uh, and about the Dementia's 2021 Manifesto. Um, it interested me greatly and great thanks to be involved in the independent review and consultation of Social Care in Scotland and the new National Care Service. Um, also, I was involved obviously in the Carers Working Group and the survey consultation, um, the self-directed support, and about dementia policy drop-in. And we also had a very interesting uh, conversation with the NCS consultation briefing and meeting with Kevin Stewart, MSP. Um, I've also been invited to help recruit new legacy roles. And as uh, Age Scotland were recently announced as the third part of Life Changes Trust National, uh, I've uh, been helping to write job descriptions for communications officer and funding and evaluation officer and assisting in job interviews of same with lived in experience panel. Uh, and Human Rights Act for Unpaid Carers. And as you said, Maxine, um, although I've been an unpaid carer, I wasn't always certain of the human rights involved in it but the potential amendments that could be made to this act are so important and being able to take part of that policy and practice forum has been really incredibly important to me about being able to influence uh, plans and proposals of a series of components or steps which contribute and define problems. Uh, ordinary people like me with lived in experience which makes such good common sense and bed best practice. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you've certainly been busy, June. So everything from subgroups based on policy areas and um, responding to government consultations, taking part in meetings directly with policy makers. Um, it sounds like you've been involved uh, with more than I have over the years. So that's just fantastic. And um, we certainly do value your expertise. Um, now, you've mentioned it a wee bit already, but I just wanted to ask what has been part of a policy and practice forum meant for you? I know recently you've been chatting a wee bit more about feeling actually empowered to take your own steps as an activist. Yeah, uh, most definitely. And uh, this help and advice has come from, from the team and from the, all the other volunteers that we've listened to this morning. Uh, it, the message that I, I would like to give to others interested in getting involved with About Dementia is not to hesitate. It's been truly rewarding experience um, 
to be involved in community advocacy efforts to bring about change made possible by the most amazing team. It has ever been my pleasure to work with. And I say that not being condescending, I say that sincerely. And I work with a lot of people on a voluntary basis, I have to say. But your, the qualities and the personal attributes and the listening skills of everybody uh, involved in it and all the volunteers and the integrity has been invaluable and it's gone a long way to develop a healthy level of confidence and self-worth for me. And the feeling is mutual, June. I know that we've developed a, a real friendship as well. And it's it's lovely just to be able to talk to each other and to draw on each other's um, wealth of experience. And I, I speak mostly for yourself there. So it's been a real privilege to, to work with you and to get to know you a wee bit better too. Um, so thank you so much for your time, honestly, you, and you. continued support of the project. We really can't thank you enough. Um, as always, it's been a privilege to chat to you. And I'll hand back to Myra, who's also a core member of About Dementia. Well, can I say a very big thank you to Maxine and to June. Uh, as you've heard from June, she wears many hats as well as her unpaid caring duties. She's given us insight into About Dementia, Unpaid Carers subgroup and some of the other groups she's on. There's a lot of work to be done to raise awareness of carers' rights. And with June on board, we will get there. Thank you very much indeed, both of you. It's time now for a short break, which will be for 10 minutes. So plenty of time to grab yourselves a cup of coffee, stretch your legs. And when we come back, we'll be having our question and answer panel session, which will be chaired by Arlene Crockett. So don't forget to put any questions you may have in the question and answer box and do keep your comments coming too. See you all in 10 minutes and enjoy your break. Thank you. Welcome back everyone. Um, it's now over to me to chair this next part of um, the programme this morning. In case you missed it, my name's Alan Crockett. And I'm um, head up the dementia programme here at the Life Changes Trust, and I'm going to be now chairing our Q&A session. Some faces that we have seen already, so welcome back, Kyandy and Myra. But some faces that we haven't seen at this point, um, so I'm going to ask them now to introduce themselves. So, Lindsay, can you introduce yourself to everyone and just say a wee bit about um, where you've come from today? Hi, my name is Lindsay Nielsen. I am the Dementia Learning Manager for Glasgow's Golden Generation. We're a small charity that works in Glasgow. We've been supporting older adults since 1948 um, and we've got quite a high incidence of um, service users who live with dementia. So the Life, Ch Life Changes Trust have been a big part of our charity for the past couple of years. Yeah, and you've been on quite a journey, so it'll be interesting to hear maybe a bit more about that very soon. And next up is Mike. Mike, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Hello, everybody. Uh, Mike Chang. Uh, I actually originate from Hong Kong. You probably noticed that was 54 years ago, but I could say quite safely say that I'm more Scottish than anything anybody else now. And uh, I got involved with the LCT stuff with uh, various projects, which I'm going to talk about later on. You know. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Lovely to have you here today. And next is Carol. Hi everyone, it's been great to, to listen in to this morning's presentations, it's been just really inspiring. So I'm in uh, currently sunny, snowy Bishop Briggs in the north of Glasgow and I'm part of a small community organisation called Acorn Shed Music. One of those small acorns that Myra mentioned right at the beginning this morning. So Acorn Shed Music is a partnership, partnership between myself and a friend, Pauline Walmsley. We have come from backgrounds in songwriting, uh, health improvement, community engagement and, and lots of group work. So we began to find through our own experience of, of writing songs how helpful it was to help us to deal with difficult situations, particularly around um, the experience of caring for someone with dementia. And so we started to look at how uh, songwriting in groups had lots of potential with with um, when we collaborated with carers and how it'd support them to, to talk about their experience. And, and uh, I think as I've used another quote somewhere else, to, to find that voice is more than just words. 
Thanks very much, Carol. Thank you. And last but by no means least, Chris, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hi, I'm Chris. I'm the co-founder of Sporting Memories. Um, we've been there since the beginning with Life Changes Trust. It's what, eight years ago and certainly have helped us um, to set up numerous clubs uh, across the country. And, and we use sports reminiscence and social activities and physical activities to engage um, older people in the community and those living with dementia and the carers as well. Thanks very much, Chris. OK, we'll kick off with our first question that's come in. Um, so this is directed, first of all, to Chris and Lindsay, but I mean, anybody can chip in. So can you give us maybe some examples of how people with dementia and unpaid carers would, would kind of drive change in the dementia family communities that, that you kind of represent? So any examples of this so far or any plans for the future? I, I would say right from the early days, and the best example really is um, when we first started up and you first supported us, um, we had a tag, tagline at Sporting Memories, which was well-being through reminiscence. And literally, we, we just had a focus on sports-based reminiscence, sitting around a table with a series of activities and things. But actually, it was our members who, um, when, when they came together and friendships were created and peer support um, um, flourished, um, there was that urge not just to talk about sport, but also had to have a go at things again. And we started to embrace physical activities from those early days from one of our first community clubs um, in Haddington. And from that, that's completely changed our model um, so that physical activity is, is as equal important as anything we do sitting around a table now. Um, and, and, and another, I think another really significant thing that happened, it was um, when we were actually, there were one of the early conferences that you put on in Perth, um, you wanted us to speak about um, our members having a say and so we thought the best way to to represent that would be to create a video and so we we videoed some of our members and it was it was one of those interviews with one of our members called Ian over in uh, East Kilbride when he talked about his club oh sorry when he talked about the group um, he was talking about how important his club was to him and he would say about how he would say to his wife look don't do anything on a Thursday that's when it's my club and up until that point, we just called our, our groups groups, you know, and, and activities. But it was that that real sincere ownership, you know, that he felt about it being his club, which was really which really came across. And so all of our groups became clubs overnight. And 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 I think that that you know better reflects what you know, what they mean to our members. Thanks very much, Chris. And Lindsay, I mean, Glasgow's Golden Generation has been on quite a journey, you know, and, and, you know, now a local legacy partner, but, you know, you, you've evolved and, and in the early days were, were about providing support to older people more generally, and now, you know, have developed into providing support for people with dementia as part of that. So, you know, what, what's driving, you know, that change in your community and, and how um, are people with dementia and unpaid carers involved in that? You're on mute, Lindsay. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, the biggest thing for us is communication, asking people what it is that they want. And the biggest thing that we found, and it's something that we do keep asking, um, it's not that we go on a decision made four years ago and we just stick with it. We're continually asking our service users and our um, service users who have dementia and their carers what it is that they want from us. And we're doing that in loads of different ways. A lot of it is just a conversation because you can get so much more out of a conversation by just sitting down and talking to someone rather than we also do kind of having a group activity of talking together um, and we've also introduced some new support plans which are very much person-centered so they're filled in and they're reviewed regularly um, which is obviously something we were doing before but we didn't we weren't focusing on the person-centered point of view so that's made a big change in our direction and one of the things that we found was that our service users who have dementia don't want just dedicated services for people's dementia. They want to be part of what's going on. They don't want to be separated. Um, and I think that's been really key to the way that our dementia services have rolled out. Um, and we don't, we do have a separate dementia service in effect because I'm there and I'm trying to um, help our staff to become more familiar with um, working with people with dementia. But over the years, that's kind of evolved into it being kind of 
across the organisation, it's no longer top down. So our staff are taking responsibility for it and it's been so good to see it clicking um, and them starting to, to get it. Um, so that's been really good. But yeah, the biggest thing is definitely speaking to our service users and giving people with dementia a voice um, within the organisation. You're absolutely right, Lindsay. You know, it, it works when, everything, when people come together and everybody has responsibility and, and kind of shared ownership, doesn't it? That's really good to hear and we'll be really excited to see how your journey develops as well because um, it has been quite a journey so far. <laughs> So I'm going to now direct a question for Myra and for, for Mike, actually, um, as our, our people, as, as experts by experience and people truly living um, this experience. It's coming from Willie, actually, and, and what Willie wants to know is, um, what are what is your hope for the coming year? And is, is there any fears that you have? So can you maybe reflect a wee bit on that? Maybe Mike will start with you and then Myra hand over I'll, to you. I'll start because... Uh, Lunar New Year this year is Tiger. The year of the Tiger is good for everybody. So I'm just hoping that uh, once we control the pandemic situation, things will look brighter, you know, with all the things we talk about, the legacy that you guys have set up with all the different groups, and I'm involved with a couple of them. I just think that things would could only get better. Maybe baby steps, you know, that's not going to happen by the end of this year, Ali, but I'm hoping that things will get there, hopefully. You know. Thanks, Mike. That, that's really inspiring. Thank you. Myra. Well, we're coming out of very difficult times with the pandemic where carers of people with dementia have had to, if they didn't have internet and connect uh, online, they <coughs> had struggled to get support. Um, and carers were looking after people with dementia in their own homes. And it was very difficult times. We're also going through a very big change with health and social care with the start of the National Care Service and what that will mean for all of us, not just for people with dementia and unpaid carers. But my hopes for the future are that the Life Changes Trust has left an enormous legacy here. And there are so many examples of really good practice and it's up to us and up to me and up to everybody like me to get out there and sell that to the organisations that are going to develop the National Care Service and promote some of these really great examples of practice. And um, our legacy partners, it was just wonderful hearing today of their new partners. And we're already working with the national leg legacy partners and they're already making an impression. And um, it's just wonderful to be part of it. So I'm hoping the future will be bright, but I'm also concerned that we won't be forgotten about and that we'll still need to get our voices heard out there. Absolutely, Matt and um, Myra, and it is important that we the last nine years is not forgotten and I don't think it will mm -hmm. be. I think that the network is strong. It, it's, you know, it's bold, it's brave. I mean, seeing Maxine's comment there, the year of the tiger might symbolise courage and bravery. We have a network that, that truly represents that and some amazing people to drive that forward. So yeah, my yeah. hope is that, that we have a really bright future and, and we're able to really influence what has happened over the last years in terms of policy, but also in terms of that really good practice and the approaches that have been undertaken by everyone um, with, the, with the trust support. So thank you, Myra. Okay, so I'm now going to bring in Carol because I don't want to leave you out, Carol, and then I'll move to Kayendi. But as I say, anybody can pitch in. So Carol, Acorn Shed Music um, is a creative endeavour. You use song to enable people to express thoughts, feelings and ideas. Your funding was um, initially for peer-to-peer -peer resources, and I mentioned that earlier for this rain. So how important has that peer element become for you? And how would you like to see this in particular develop in the future? Thanks, Arlene. Um, I suppose it's, it's quite poignant that's the question because, you know, when we started out, the, the first chunk of funding that we got from Life Changes Trust was for a peer-to-peer -peer resource. And it was really a massive springboard for us, uh, just in terms of getting out to do what what we do and and getting people to to sort of participate with us in that and find the real benefits of it so i mean at the core of what we do our ambition really is that 
for songwriting and, and any creative practice you could really apply this to as well is is to really get a vision for how it empowers people to take charge of their own um, voice. Uh, I've talked about voice before, but if you can imagine it as taking hold of the ball, you know, you're playing a game, you take hold of the ball and, and running with it. Um, we're not there to tell people what to say. Um, and so when carers start having conversations between each other, that's where the magic happens uh, within this work that we do. Um, it then begins to, I think it was, um, I, I forget who it was earlier, talked about really instilling confidence and feelings of self-worth and value into people when they realise actually we can do this this stuff. Um, but the value is not just what happens creatively in, in the group. It's what happens when they take away what they've learned, that act of you know sharing between each other. Um, and as, as, an example, um, as an example of from this rain, which was our project in Glasgow, one of the chaps that was involved with, it, with that is now volunteering with us in Lanarkshire, which is amazing. So he's coming every month and he's turning up, sitting down, and he's just been part of that. So he's not he's not a teacher, he's not a tutor, he's not a he's he's not there as a, as any kind of leader. He's there as a peer with this other new group of people, and it's fantastic um, seeing how he, you know his working with people is starting to bring that to life. Um, I think you know the peer support element of it is really what has made the projects that we've done so far a success. You know, is that ownership that people take of that, and when this when Jim, who's been coming to to Lanarkshire, and uh, in our video, Jim says we found that all our stories were the same. We really captured the essence of what it means to support one another um, in the context of of a, a group of carers, uh, and how that translates is then seeing you know Jim and others stepping out and and talking to other people about what they've learned. So. For going forward with the legacy funding, for the first time we're going to be working across a whole um, locality, a neighbourhood, so Eastern Bartonshire, which is fantastic because we've been very much focused on one small um, community before. And we hope that by sharing across, lots of groups uh, will begin to engage with that concept that peer to peer is not just with your pals and not just with the folk that you see every day, but it's actually saying that person's in, in bother, you know, or that person's struggling, or, oh, here, they've got that same thing that, that I, I was asking about, you know, and maybe they can help me. So it's about being not afraid to ask and not afraid to offer. Yeah, And I think that's been the real value in, in the work that has taken place. Um, Carol, is that it's not, people are not working in isolation. They're, they're part of something, they're part of a family, they're part of a network. And that peer support is across all of that, you know, all of the piece and, and not just about people being, you know, secluded within their own communities or their own groups. So, so thank you for that. Okay, Kyendi, I'm going to ask you a bit, of, a bit about the national work and, and might bring you in as well, um, just around your involvement. But firstly, Kyendi, can you tell us what the plans are that are, are going to be put in place to build that network that, that we've talked about so much and the importance of that by the Life Changer Trust? and how people get involved um, that are maybe not already part of the network um, nationally or who may want to get involved locally. So can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. Thanks, Ali. Um, we are really excited about the plans that, that we've we've got um, around building this network. I think that's that's been one of the real strengths of the work of the Trust, and I think that's really reflected today in the conversations that we've had here and the conversations that you can see taking place on, on, on the chat. And I, I just really wish we could all actually physically be together. I've kind of got that slight tangible uh, need to, to give everybody a bit of a hug, actually, just, just now, because I think that that togetherness is really where a lot of the richness and the inspiration has come. And you could see that in those early Life Changes Trust conferences, that, that people were sparking off of each other. And we absolutely don't want to lose that. And I think that's a really important part of what I see as our role within the, the legacy arrangements. We have recently been funded by the Scottish Government to do some work around um, grassroots community connections around dementia. And one of the things that we want to do with that is um, to build a sustained network of dementia-friendly communities across Scotland, to include those that, that we already know about, the, the, the local legacy partners, many of these smaller organisations that have been funded by, by the trusts lo locally, the, the hubs that there are regionally as well, but also to bring in 
new people and provide new opportunities to those communities that haven't yet had the opportunity to, to benefit uh, from the fantastic work that has been taking place. There's so much rich learning and there's, there's so much evidence that we have there. I think it's a real opportunity through that network um, to be able to, to put that learning out, to give people mentoring opportunities, give um, new organisations and community groups that want to start to become dementia-friendly communities, hook them up with um, organisations that, that maybe even you aren't even in their, their backyard, but give opportunity for study visits and, and that sort of thing. So if you are interested in, in that, or anything to do with what about dementia um, I've been doing as well. And as you've heard from, from June and, and might hear from, from Mike as well, please feel free to, to get in touch with us. I put our email address uh, in the chat and I'm sure Maxine will, will pop it into the chat in case you missed it. The door is always open and we're always super keen to, to meet new people and have conversations and, and, and explore new opportunities for you all. Fantastic, thanks Kenzie. So there's a call to action for everybody on this call that are not connected with about dementia and we're now going to have a bit of a PR pitch I hope from Mike as well around the work. So Mike, can you tell us a wee bit about what inspired you to get involved um, with the work that you're involved in, not just with the Trust but with the many other individuals and organisations and is there anything you can say to people out there that might be hesitant or are unsure of taking your lead? Thanks, Arlene. Um, well, I don't know, some of you know, I was diagnosed. I'm really quite a newcomer into the whole thing about dementia. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I was diagnosed uh, with Alzheimer's about three years ago. And, you know, the whole world seemed to fall apart, like most people who were first diagnosed. Uh, but six months down the road, I said, hang on a minute. I'm not going to beat this. I might as well join them, you know. And being an ex graduating from Stirling Uni so that was the first site I went into you know so lo and behold within days I was connected with Louise McCabe's group you know and she said hang on a minute we've got quite a good project that will fit your profile you know so I was more or less sort of recruited straight away you know into the creating better life evaluation project with Stirling and that's over two years now and things are sort of coming to an end you know and I think the whole idea of being a community researcher was that I find it was a confidence building process where our values, our opinions are well respected by the group and somebody like yourselves with the LCT because I've interviewed quite a lot of beneficiaries, staff and yourselves and all that during the two years and I just learned so much about dementia that, you know, you're not alone. You know, you've got a lot of good partnership helping out and all that. And for, with my connection with the Sterling Project, it kind of rolled on to connect with somebody like Kayanda's group with about dementia and Maxine, and also Deepness group, and most recently the Dementia Friendly in East Lothian. And I think Maxine mentioned in her last interview that it's the friendship building. And to me, that's the biggest thing. You know, I was a wee bit cautious when I first said, well, should I really let everybody know I'm living with dementia? And I'm really glad I did, you know, and I say to people, you know, that don't hold back, you know, yeah. come and speak to everybody, you know, because there are lots of people who understand, you know, what you're going through if you want to put it that way. And um, also, you know, to mention most recently connecting with people like Kerry Connection with Graham's group and Ruth's group as well, you know, it's, it's this sort of friendship building. And I think we're now moving on to the next stage with the legacy with LCT, you know, and I'm really looking forward to it, you know. Great, Mike. So really, really good words of wisdom there. You know, don't hold back. Keep going, you know, um, because there's a, there's a huge network out there and, and lots of friendship that can be developed as a result, so thank you. So I think this will be probably our last question um, and I'm and people can pitch in, but I'll direct it to Chris first of all. So being alongside the trust, Chris, from, you're one of the kind of early trailblazers, let's say, um, since the very beginning with Sporting Memories. Um, over that time, have you seen change for the better? And what are your aspirations for the future? It's quite a big question. So <laughs> what do you think, Chris? Well, well I suppose, you know, for, focusing on our own work, um, I mean, the trust has been fantastic from the beginning and supporting us 
our innovation along the way and 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 the way that we've we followed the the wishes of our members and and and, and followed our nose if you like in expanding what we do so embracing physical activity um other projects like um, um the get outdoors project where we were connect reconnecting our members with sports that they had previously enjoyed you know and that, that was specifically around bowls but going forward, uh, the irony of, of, of COVID was that, um, you know, we, we embraced Zoom for some of our members who could engage in that way. Telephone circles, which I know Age Scotland were, were using as well. Um, we were sending out um, uh, these uh, 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 kit bag packages to um, people all over Scotland, up, up as far as Orkney. Um, and, and going forward, uh, I suppose for us, um, the legacy that we're building on now with a new project is, is this ability for us to be able to reach people anywhere, you know, with, with some level of activity. So that's opened up a whole new world to us. But we're also still so interested in, in deepening the impact that we can make. So uh, our Sporting Memories Club once a week, we know that they're impactful, but, it, but what about all the other days? So, so again, another part of, of the work that we're going to be piloting in the, in the uh, months to come is going to be around well how can we populate those other days with 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 things that can engage um our members and 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 improve you know health outcomes and just um helping people be more connected in their local um communities as well so lots still lots and lots to do but you know we've we've had fantastic you know the legacy is we've got a fantastic platform to build on and, and to carry on um, innovating and, and spreading our work Thank you so much. Uh, some fantastic um, work, you know, has has happened since you you first arrived um, on on our doorstep all those years ago, Chris. And it's it's just developed and evolved, and, and good to see, you know, what it's going to look like going forward in terms of that that local local legacy partnership. And Maxine's put in the the chat. I think she was expecting a song. Actually, pack up your top troubles in your old kit bag there, Chris. <laughs> but I'll not put you under any pressure. Um, today to do that. Uh, uh, clubs always have a club song, but we haven't used that. <laughs> they choose their own. Okay, so that's us come to the end of the discussion. I just, it, there's never enough time. We, we could talk and talk forever. It's been really good just to get a, a short insight from you all around your reflections, around your plans and, and your hopes for the future. Um, big shoes to fill, but, you know, we have every confidence that, that all of you and, and everybody part and um, joining us today and part of that network will be bolder and be stronger as we move forward because there's still work to do but um if we do it together then we'll, we'll definitely get it done okay so again huge thanks to our panel members for joining us and answering um, some of your questions today it's um it's been really great to hear um the power of, of, of peer support that that power of being part of a family um, to drive all that change forward. So, so thank you. Um, and Myra and Candy will see um, very, very soon. So, before I hand back the chairing duties to, to Myra and Candy, I'm going to now introduce a short film. We've called this film The Original Gangster, as it features a person who has walked alongside the trust pretty much since the beginning and we consider him to be one of our original partners and a really good friend. He is the one and only James McKellop. James has a diagnosis of dementia, but has been unstinting in his support, guidance and advice since the dawn of time. My colleague and Gina Faulkner caught up with him to talk about his journey with the Trust, his many collaborations with us and how he thinks things have improved for people with dementia over the, the years. So prepare yourselves. Over to James and Angina. Hello, James. It's lovely to have you here today in my dining room, face to face. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to introduce you a little bit for anybody that doesn't know you. Um, so this section is called The Original Gangster, um, and I just want to reassure everybody watching that you're not moonlighting as a violent criminal <laughs> mastermind. Um, not today. Not today. <laughs> Only on Sundays. Um, but that it really refers more to you as being the father figure of the development of dementia activism in Scotland, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a wee minute. 
Um, you are a, a brilliant photographer. Um, you are a fantastic writer. You're an award winner. Um, you have chaired the Scottish Dementia Working Group, which you were a founding member of. You chaired that for six years. And you're also a vice chair. Um, and you're a member of the Scottish um, Dementia Alumni. And you've become a very familiar face to all of the staff working at the Trust. We used to love your weekly visits with your big rucksack mm -hmm. full of books. Mm -hmm. um, everybody looked forward to you coming in and to seeing what literary delights you had in your, in your rucksack. And uh, any of the books that didn't find a good home straight away were uh, put into the James McKillop Library, which we established in one of the offices mm -hmm. in your honour. So, as I said, you've become quite an integral part of the Trust. You mm -hmm. have been involved in lots of different things with us. So um, you've been speaking at events and conferences. You've been involved in research um, and you've developed and written some of the peer to peer resources that the Trust funded. Um, so just wanted to ask, do you remember how you first heard about the Trust or how you first got involved with the Trust? Well, in, in Glasgow, there was a yearly exhibition from charities and other businesses at the SEC. Mm -hmm. And most years I managed to get along to see what was happening in the world. And I came across the LCT stall and somebody, I can't remember who, but somebody engaged me and told me about the work. Uh, and it, it quite impressed me. Mm -hmm. And again, the sort of eagerness of the staff. So it's too far back now to remember exactly, but somehow I got involved and I've, I've done quite a bit of work with them over the years. It's been a really enjoyable experience. I've never met such a dedicated, lovely band of people. Oh, that's really nice of you to say. Well, I mean, you've been pretty dedicated yourself. I think we've, you know, we've called on your expertise many, many times. And um, I'm glad that you were at, I think it's the gathering, the, mm. the big thing, the charity thing at the SECC. I'm really glad that you went along that day and that, that somebody managed to, um, you know, encourage you to get involved with the trust. Mm. Um, so am I. Yeah, because your expertise has been, has been so important to us over the years and developing our, our programmes. And I've mentioned a few of the projects that you've been involved with over the years. What has it been like for you to work alongside a, a funding organisation? It was new, mm -hmm. uh, exciting, and obviously I approached it with a bit of trepidation because I said, a new year, a new field. What would, what would it be like working in hand work for a long time? Mm -hmm. So I was gently eased in, as I said. Staff are fully supportive. So I get, I get eased into that. And again, that encouraged me to do, go that extra mile and help me. And you're still really involved in, in doing a lot of things as well. Um, mm -hmm. and one of the, the things that you were um, quite deeply involved in was the publication of the Loud and Clear mm -hmm. um, report. And that detailed the experiences of um, people with dementia becoming influencers and activists in Scotland. Mm -hmm over the last two decades. And of course, you were one of the, the key people um, mm -hmm. who, who started that off. Do you have any advice for anybody with dementia who is interested in getting in, more involved with activism? I think in the getting a diagnosis of any sort of dementia, they're devastated, they're shocked. And they, like the whole world has been put in a tumble dryer. Mm -hmm. And they, so what I would advise is, meeting people at the same stage of illness as yourself because you might think your life's over but it's not your old life is over but a new life beckons and you can see other people realize they're just like you the ordinary human beings have developed an illness and I say, go, go, go to where they, they have meetings and just tea and chat and get to know the lie of the land and, and then if you feel you want to be involved in something special look for uh, a campaigning group because you, you may have something that they're desperately needing you don't know and even if you don't have so sometimes even your vote counts that maybe a proposal comes up, comes up yes or no and you, you, your vote could go towards getting the right course laid out. 
That's great advice. Um, so I again, I, I didn't mention a lot of people lose their confidence as I did once. So meeting with others can build it back up again. Yeah. Now you've been all over Scotland. Anytime you go on holiday, you've taken, you know, information leaflets and you're driving with dementia booklets mm -hmm. and left it in GP surgeries and community centres and anywhere, you know, that you think it might be useful. And you've really helped to raise awareness of dementia and to challenge stigmatising language around dementia. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the work of the Trust over the last nine years has helped to, to change how people view people with dementia? Very much so. Uh, they've allowed people with potential to bring it to fruition. And we've seen that in the, the, the booklets that have been published. Mm -hmm. It's helped to raise awareness that people with dementia shouldn't be written off. They should be encouraged to do what they can and helped. Yeah, and, and, the, and those booklets have, have helped a huge amount of people and they've been used as well um, in um, universities mm -hmm. and um, in, in different practices as well. Um, um, allied health professionals are using those booklets as well to improve their practice. So mm -hmm. um, that's fantastic. Um, my yeah, well, I would sorry. like to say Life Changes Trust has made life better for an awful lot of people in Scotland. And that's including carers, that uh, if the person gets in, involved in uh, projects, it, it brings their life and it takes some of the strain off the carer because carers are badly neglected. Yeah. So, so it help, uh, and, and directly it helps them as well. Can I ask you just one last question, James? Um, do you have any personal favourite memories of um, being a part of the Life Changes Trust? Yes, there's one that sticks out in my mind, and even though I've got memory problems, this will never fade. During the COVID, just about everybody in the world was affected, and in the UK, there was a, a lock, complete lockdown, so you, you couldn't have anything in your house, not even your relatives, couldn't visit people in hospital unless you could look through the window of a care home mm -hmm. and just wave to them. So I, I became 80 later that year. And again, I couldn't have a party, couldn't even have my children visit me. Mm -hmm. So and then to my utter surprise, I got a booklet from Life Changes Trust. The staff members had written something for me and put in their photograph. And uh, I was very humbled by people. They were dealing with their own problems. And, and yet they thought of, thought of me to do this thing. And then I said, T tears came to my eyes. So uh, somebody thought it was worth something. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, we enjoyed doing that. And there was no way we were going to let your 80th birthday go past <laughs> quietly. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm glad you, you enjoyed that. That's a, that's a really nice memory to share. Yeah. Thank you. I said, I've got no memory of my 80th apart from that. <laughs> well, that's lovely. Mm. Uh, but I'm getting quite emotional now, I think. Um, well, James, listen, it's been absolutely lovely to have you here today. Um, and like I said, it's, it's even nicer to have you here in person having a cup of tea in the dining room. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you very much for all of your work over the years. It's been an absolute privilege to work with you. It's been a privilege to be your friend for the last six years. And, and I hope we'll be friends for a very long time to come. Um, and thank you very much for your time this morning. Oh, I've enjoyed being here and it must have been a pleasure for you meeting me. Oh, I absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that just about fits, doesn't it? I think this one's a bit a bit small for my head. It's got sharks on it as well. Uh, so if you were a gangster, what would your gangster name be, James? The Tartan Terror. The Tartan Terror. That's yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you to uh, Andrina for inviting us into the dining room with James and sharing your conversation. 
James, I would say you are the Tartan pioneer. You opened up new ways of thinking about living well with dementia and you influenced so much far and beyond in your own modest way. I first met James through the Scottish Dementia Working Group many years ago and our paths have crossed many times at the Life Changes Trust and various other meetings and conferences we went along to. I also met his wife Maureen and now James is an advocate for unpaid carers. So thank you both for your invite to the dining room and thank you both for letting us share some of these memories. So one final film before we hear some closing remarks this morning. We're going to take a wee look back at some of the incredible individuals and projects who have walked alongside the Trust over the last nine years, and there have been many. So we thought we would focus on just some of the areas where projects and activities have developed beyond the funding they first received from the Trust and which provide a solid legacy for the future. These are the dementia-friendly communities, de dementia activism, peer-to-peer -peer resources, and the Trust's regional events programme, which put the priorities of people living with dementia and unpaid carers front and centre. We hope you enjoy sharing our memories. Dementia-friendly communities are places where people with dementia and unpaid carers are included, empowered and supported in every aspect of life. These communities also help to empower people whose lives are affected by dementia so that they can remain an active part of society, live as independently as possible and participate in decisions that affect their everyday lives. These communities are all very different some are geographical communities, which relate to a specific location, like Prestwick or Orkney. Others are communities of interest, that bring people together because they are interested in similar activities, for example sport, art, singing or being outdoors. Over the years, the Life Changes Trust has funded 40 dementia-friendly communities. Every one of them was special, and every one of them helped to create better lives. And it's definitely one of the biggest bits of feedback we're getting is um, just thanks for asking me, thanks for involving me, thanks for acknowledging me and, and giving me a bit of an opinion and a voice. I think that's probably the, the most common feedback I'm getting. Well, Ian, who was in the group today, um, when he first came to the group, he was reluctant to come to the group in the first place. I mean, he'd had a diagnosis of dementia and he has Parkinson's disease as well. So he had to be encouraged to come along in the first instance. He's contributing now by running the quiz each week um, and now where he's actually going along to another group and volunteering. I've actually joined the library, I've never been in a library in my life, so I joined the library to try and get some trivia books. It's something I can look forward to. Hey, 
Acorn Shed Music are to open up dialogues between people, especially people who don't feel they have a voice, and present them with an opportunity or a platform to express opinions and ideas and thoughts that they might not say to anybody else. Once we were in the, the group and we started to write our stories, we discovered that most of your stories are the same. Talking to somebody that's in the same position as yourself, it makes it easier for you. I think you do kind of open up easier. Sometimes things you've not said to anyone else before, we could say in that room knowing that it was going to go to a good purpose. It's getting those feelings out of yourself and the comfort of talking to people that fully understand the position you're in. If anything, I hope people listen to the songs that they can open up rather than maybe harbouring too much within themselves. And when you see the stories then turning into song and hearing the song put together and then actually kind of joining in with it, it's been fun. It has. It was quite powerful. I think overall it's, it's, it's a great experience. A little bit of this. I never considered myself as, as an activist and I never considered when we started up Stand that Stand would become an activist group. It was just really a peer support group. I think if you talk to people, you let them know how you feel, what it's like to live with dementia, the difficulties involved. I think that should be enough to, to, to let them see what it's like and hopefully try and change things for the better. I would never ever have thought before that he would do what he's doing. He's, you know, he's out there, he's talking to people and taking on the Scottish Government. Not everybody with dementia can take on the Scottish Government, can they? <laughs> dementia is not the end. That's just a different chapter. Having the peer support group stand has uh, probably saved my life at the end of the day, to be honest. In November 2018, the Life Changes Trust began a countrywide tour engaging with all 14 local health board areas across Scotland. The Trust wanted to bring local communities together to find out how they could support those communities to create better lives for families affected by dementia. With each area they visited, the Life Changes Trust held storytelling sessions to find out directly from people with dementia and unpaid carers what was important to them and what would make the most difference to their lives in their own communities. These conversations helped shape a set of local priorities for each area, which reflected what people with dementia and unpaid carers had said. It was clear that what people really wanted was respect, empowerment and to be listened to and valued. With the help of so many people with dementia, unpaid carers, professionals and volunteers, the Life Changes Trust has developed a strong body of evidence that highlights the importance of community-led support and locally developed strategies. The Trust has already been using this evidence to help change local and national perspectives on dementia. Now and going forward, the work of creating better lives for people with dementia and unpaid carers will be continued by Life Changes Trust Legacy Partners. A new journey begins.
from small acorns indeed. I think if you haven't been moved by that incredible film, there's really something wrong with you. What an absolutely beautiful and fitting tribute to the incredible work that has taken place over the course of the last nine years. I'm feeling a little bit overcome <laughs> by all of that, as I'm sure you all are too. I've written just down a couple of words that occurred to me as I was watching that and just reflecting on, on what the trust means, what the trust has delivered. Um, I've got words here like friendship, reciprocity, voice, inspiration, innovation, sharing, laughing, cake, peer support, community. I think that really sums up an incredible legacy of all the work that has taken place. And I think the friendship and the connection that we all feel here today is going to be that lasting legacy that has fundamentally changed the way that people living with dementia and unpaid carers are viewed in Scotland and the contributions that they make to the communities that we live in. This is the final legacy event for the Trust's Dementia Programme, and I think it's only fitting that I invite Arlene Crockett to join me again on screen. Arlene, can you join me? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Arlene. It has been an incredible, amazing nine years with ups and downs and smiles, frowns and mostly ups and mostly smiles. Tell us, what has been your favourite memory of working with the Trust? Um, goodness, what a question. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really struggling now. So you've got to, <laughs> to really bear with me. This has been quite a morning. Um, and I'm going to be really greedy and I'm going to share two. Um, the first is quite simple. I, I joined the Trust in, in the 15th of January 2018, a date will, that will be forever in my memory and will stay with me forever. Um, and and the, the day that I walked into such a, a warm welcome and, and that real family um, was, was there from the very start. I had came from an organisation that I had been part of for 16 years. So I was starting a new job, but also in a new organisation. And it was completely different to what I was used to as well. And I walked in those doors at half past nine um, and on the whiteboard was a, a welcome Arlene with a smiley face. And it is really simple, but it was just what I needed and, and it will stay with me forever. The second was our, our trip to Orkney for the regional event up there. And, and I have loved lots, I've got lots of memories and it's been really difficult, but this one really stood out. We had an event um, one evening called Dance and Jive with Food and Fun. Um, and really it was just fantastic to witness the community coming together from toddlers running about to people in their later years, throwing their zimmers to the side, um, eating, dancing, and really just having really good fun together. Um, it was just fantastic. We were, we were creating better lives right there and then, and it was really humbling to watch. So they were these two kind of really good memories for me. Those are lovely memories. And um, I share your memory of the, the dance and, and jive in Orkney. That was my second or third week in the role and yeah. just the, the warmth of welcome that I received from, from all of you and from all the wonderful people in, in Orkney made me feel also stepping out into a, a, a slightly new arena yeah. uh, for me that it was all going to be okay. Um, and just what a wonderful night it was. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us, Arlene. Could I ask you what your aspirations are for the future? Yeah, I've been asking lots of people that and, and need to think about that myself. Um, I mean, I said a lot in, in my opening remarks earlier on, but I think it's just that, that we don't lose sight of how far we've come and, and what we've achieved in the last nine years. And that that really strong network of people with dementia and of unpaid carers really continues to grow because it's it's strong and it's you know it's confident and we need to make sure that we continue in that vein and that their communities continue to enable them the way that all of those projects have done and, and those legacies local legacy partners will do in the future and that Scotland not only has world leading dementia policy but we can genuinely say that this is now realized in practice and I think we're starting to see that but we, we do have a way to go and it can happen 
it, it maybe be an aspiration, but it is a real possibility. And I think what we've shown with the dementia program and across the across the trust and beyond is that nothing really is off the table if we really work together and truly collaborate with each other. So that would be my aspiration for the future. Those are wise words. And I I think your aspirations are absolutely right. They're, they're bang on. And I think you're right. They, they can be achieved. And I think that's really the challenge that all of us need to take away from, from today and, and looking to the future that this work has been phenomenal and has been so important. And it's our responsibility now to, to take that on and, and to continue building on that and, and doing justice to the work that, that you and Anna and Andrina yeah. and Colm and all the rest of the team, Absolutely. Deborah as well, um, have done over the course of the past nine years. It's a it's a big responsibility, but I think we are we are equal to the task if a as real, you say we continue to stick together. A real you, team effort, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Do you have any final closing remarks for us today, Arlene? Just one or two, and it is only one or two. Um, just to say, firstly, this is this is the best job I've ever had. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for making that possible for me. And finally, to say, you know, be kind and be patient as change is hard, but also brings some some really brilliant rewards. And when it is tough and you 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 know you don't think things are going your way or it's not the direction that you thought it was going to go, just remember that great oaks from little acorns grow so thank you everyone thank you that's beautiful thank you so much arlene so all that is left for me to do is to say an absolutely enormous thank you to my co-chair today myra lament to everybody who contributed to this event and all of the trust events over the years and thank you to all of you for coming along today I think I speak for everyone at Life Changes Trusts when I quote A.A. Milne, and I very much hope I'll be able to quote this without crying, how lucky we are to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay warm, and stay together. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.